Hey guys, Micah here with Electric, and today we're reviewing the Bloom Scooter, which is probably one of the cheapest electric scooters on the market. Let's see how it rides. The Bloom Scooter is an imported electric scooter sold by California-based Ampere Motors. I've been riding around on a Bloom Scooter for the past few weeks to see how good a budget electric scooter can be. But before I jump into the specs, there's something I have to address first. If you head on over to the Bloom Scooter or Ampere Motors websites, you'll see a bunch of nice photos of an electric scooter. The only problem is, those are not the Bloom Scooter. They are New Scooters, which is one of the most technologically leading electric scooter companies out there right now. As you scroll through the pictures and videos, you'll see more photos of News Scooters, not Bloom Scooters. Though there is one video of the actual Bloom Scooter here. I asked the company about this on multiple occasions, and they gave me varying answers, ranging from that their scooters are made in the same factory as News, and that they sell the new scooter in other countries, so they use those photos here on the US website. For what it's worth, New denies both of those claims. So there's something weird going on here with these misleading photos being used to sell a different scooter entirely. But I'm here to review the scooter that actually showed up, not the one on the website, so let's do that. The actual Bloom Scooter's ride is fairly nice, largely due to the really comfortable seat. The suspension is just decent, but the seat is so plush that it makes up for it. I'm not sure if the suspension includes true dampening, or if it's really just spring suspension. Bumps cause a lot of bounciness, which makes me think it might just be spring suspension. I did find that the suspension worked better with two people on the scooter, and the extra preload seemed to help. For what it's worth, my wife thinks that this is the most comfortable ride out of all my electric scooters and motorcycles, at least from the passenger's perspective. The little backrest is also really nice for making sure the passenger feels safer, like they won't slip off the back when the scooter accelerates. So my wife gives this scooter two thumbs up from the back seat. The Bloom scooter is powered by 72 volt and 22 amp hour lead acid batteries that are spread out under the seat and under the deck, giving you just under 1.6 kilowatt hours of capacity. The motor is a rear wheel hub motor that is listed as 1000 watts on the website, but is definitely more powerful than that. The scooter launches off the line and has great initial torque and power. The brakes are hydraulic discs, front and rear. The front brake lever arrived with significant air in the line, allowing me to squeeze the lever all the way down to the handle. I still did the first ride like that, and the brakes worked. Let's do a hard braking test, and go. Alright. Probably could have braked a little bit harder, but yeah, I think that was pretty good. But after the first ride, I used an old trick that I learned to tighten up the front brake. I tied the brake lever down to the handle overnight, which helped squeeze out any air bubbles in the lines. Now the brakes are both crisp and work great. There's some slight pulsing, which likely means the discs aren't 100% true, but for a budget scooter, they're more than I expected, and they're more than enough for good stopping, even in an emergency. A nice feature of the Bloom Scooter is that it has both a center stand and a side stand. The side stand is good for times when you just want to hop off and get going quickly, while the center stand is better for long-term parking because it's more stable, and it's also better for parking on loose terrain like grass or dirt. The lights are also pretty good. I don't really notice a big difference between the regular headlight and the high beams, but both are plenty visible. The biggest bummer in the scooter is probably the lead acid batteries. They cannot be removed for charging, like other electric scooters with lithium ion batteries. You have to charge these batteries on the scooter, which means you need a ground level outlet. I live on an upper floor in an apartment building, but fortunately I spied a Chevy Volt in our parking garage and followed its charging cable back to what turned out to be the only 110 volt outlet in the structure. From there I ran a 75 foot extension cord and found a place to park the scooter to charge it. If you have your own private garage or access to a ground level 110 volt outlet, then you should have no problem charging the Bloom scooter. But it could be an issue for apartment dwellers that can't find a creative solution. In terms of range, one charge will get you around 25 miles, maybe 30 if you're going slower. My scooter tops out at 25 miles per hour. Ampere Motors says that they can make the scooters go up to 40 miles per hour and that they set mine at 25 miles per hour because Massachusetts law limits scooters to 30 miles per hour. But if they had that ability, why didn't they just set mine to 30 miles per hour? I'll take them at their word, but it does seem a bit odd. As it stands, my 25 mile per hour scooter is still nice, but I'd really love to have a bit more speed so I can feel more comfortable on 30 mile per hour roads. Sometimes on open roads, I find myself holding up traffic with cars waiting to pass me. Of course, I get payback when traffic builds up and I can zip right past everyone. 
This is probably one of the single largest benefits of an electric scooter, by the way. One other small issue with the scooter is the inaccuracy of the speedometer. It reads in kilometers per hour, which is fine, and Ampere Motor says that will be updated to miles per hour in the future. But it reads way too high. It tells me I'm going 66 kilometers per hour, when GPS says I'm actually going 40 kilometers per hour, which is 25 miles per hour. That's more than a little bit optimistic, to say the least. But if you put aside the inaccurate speedometer, the limited charging options, and the odd advertising and marketing situation on the website, the scooter itself actually performs quite well. My wife loves riding on it, I think it's fun to ride, and it gets me everywhere I need to go in the city. If you need more speed, then they can apparently do that for you, or so they say. And if you don't have many potholes in your area, then the ride will be quite good. And even for more pockmarked roads, as long as you avoid the big bumps, the suspension will be fine for smooth surfaces. So there are some caveats here, but all in all, the scooter works well and it's fun to ride. It'd be good for a more price-sensitive EV enthusiast that wants an electric scooter, but who is not prepared to spend twice as much as this one to get fancier features and higher quality parts. All right, thanks for watching, everyone. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe so you can see all of Electrek's electric vehicle videos. See you next time.